Hello everyone, I'm Arthur Schweitmann and today I'd like to give you a presentation on hybrid mechanistic data-driven modeling for the deterministic global optimization of transcritical organic brain cancer cycle. Thank you very much for watching. Let's start with data-driven modeling and optimization in chemical engineering. So what we mean by data-driven modeling is that we use machine learning to train data-driven models in a supervised way. Then we often combine these data-driven models with existing physical models to form hybrid mechanistic data-driven models. And then we often use optimization in order to optimize these hybrid models in order to find optimal operation or design of processes. So why should we use data-driven models in our optimization approaches? In many cases, physical models are not known and might be expensive to develop. Also, some physical models might be known but might be available in another software or might be expensive to evaluate or not robust to evaluate. In addition, they often do not provide the necessary relaxations or derivatives for optimization. Data-driven models, on the other hand, are usually relatively cheap to train and very cheap to evaluate and very robust to evaluate. Also, we can get the derivatives of data-driven models easily and we can also get relaxations. In addition, there have been very recent developments that make more data available, for example, through smart manufacturing from the industry. Also, we have seen recent developments in machine learning, for example, in the software and hardware and research that makes machine learning easily applicable for everyone. At the same time, we have seen recent advances in global optimization, for example, the reduced space approach, which I will come to later on in this talk. And if we put all of this together, we get a relatively high benefit to cost ratio when it comes to solving complex problems using data-driven approaches. As we all know, there exists a variety of surrogate models, so data-driven models, that ranges from linear models to artificial neural networks. And in the talk today, we'll talk about artificial neural networks because they are capable of learning highly nonlinear relationships to high accuracy. So when you want to optimize a neural networks, and I don't mean the training problem, but rather the problem where the neural networks models part of your process and you want to solve the optimization problem with a trained neural network embedded. And what we see in the literature, many people have used local optimization to solve these problems. However, as we all know, local optimization might get stuck in local optima and is therefore not desired for this optimization problem. A few people have used stochastic global approaches for example, genetic algorithms or simulated annealing for these problems. However, stochastic global methods cannot guarantee to identify global optimality within finite time. Um, what is desired for this optimization is deterministic global approaches because they can guarantee to identify global optimal solutions. However, there are just a few applications in the previous literature and most of them have been limited to shadow neural networks. So neural networks with just one hidden layer. So why is deterministic global optimization with neural networks difficult? Well, if you look at a neural network and if you want to optimize, let's say, the output of the neural network, Y out, usually you need to provide the full set of equality constraints or equations and variables to describe the complex network structure of the neural network. And that leads to large scale optimization problems, which are difficult to solve. So what we have introduced recently is the reduced space formulation for optimization problems with neural networks embedded. 
And what we do is we solve the equality constraints of the neural network for the output y out. And then we propagate McCormick relaxations and its subgradients through the computer code. And this leads to much smaller problem size. So we have eliminated all equality constraints here and the branch and bound server operates only in the degrees of freedom. And this also has the advantage as the sub-problems of the branch and bound algorithms, so the upper and lower bounding problems, are much smaller. So in each iteration of the branch and bound server, we get a better performance of the sub-solvers, which gives you huge um, speed-ups. And we've implemented this release space approach in our two software tools, Melon and Mango, where Mango is our global solver and Melon provides some machine learning models for it. So let's give you a small illustrative test function. Here is a peaks function. We've generated 5,000 data points on it randomly. Then we have trained deep neural networks on this peaks function, and then we optimize the predictions of the neural network. And if you want to optimize the predictions, depending on the formulation of the problem, you get different problem sizes. In the reduce space, we only operate on the degrees of freedom. So we have two optimization variables and no equality constraints. Whereas in full space, you end up with over 200 equality constraints and optimization uh, variables, depending on the architecture of the neural network. And this leads to uh, great differences in the computation of time for optimization. So for the full space, what you can see here is that we are not able to solve this problem within an hour um, using either of these solvers here. Whereas in the reduced space using our global solver Mango, we can solve the problem within the range of minutes. So we get huge speed ups in the reduced space formulation. If you want to use these tools in your research or industry, uh, you can, for example, download Melon. Melon is our machine learning model for optimization tool. It interfaces to our open source software uh, Mango, and we can also export the problems to GAMS. And we also interface to state-of-the-art machine learning tools like Keras, TensorFlow, and so on. And we've implemented artificial neural networks and Gaussian processes so far but we are still extending this framework. Okay, let's move on to the case study. We are looking at organic Rankine cycles, which uh, can be used to recover power from low temperature heat sources. However, ORCs may suffer from low efficiencies, and therefore we look at transcritical operation of it. So uh, the low pressure part is operated as subcritical, temperature, uh, pressure level, whereas the high pr uh, pressure part is supercritical. And we want to use the Tumisic global optimization to identify the best design and operation of these RC cycles. So one critical part in order to optimize RCs are uh, thermodynamic models. And we know that multiparametric equations of state provide accurate thermodynamic models or, or you know, create some of them properties. However, this is usually available through external tools such as CoolProf or RevProf. And these external tools do not provide derivatives or relaxations for optimization. So therefore, they are not suitable for deterministic global optimization directly. So what we propose for this problem is to build a hybrid mechanistic data-driven model so we implement mechanistic models for the unit operations, so heat exchangers, pumps, and so on. And we combine this with data-driven models for the neural networks. So we train data-driven models on data generated from, for example, CoolProp. And then we combine the data-driven models with mechanistic models for our process optimization. In our case study here, we have two objectives. First of all, we maximize the power net output. 
And then we go for um, economic objective, which is the liberalized cost of electricity. We have a few uh, degrees of freedoms, which are the pressure levels, mass flow, evaporator, outlet temperature, and so on. And then also what we did is we discretized the pinch inequality for the evaporator in order to avoid, uh, avoid temperature crossovers. Okay, let's go to the accuracy of the neural networks. So what we did is we generated 10 to the power of five data points for each working fluid and for each region. So 10 to the power of five data points for the supercritical vapor, for the subcritical vapor, and for the saturated liquid and vapor. In total, we trained 18 separate neural networks for each working fluid candidate. And we found that the architecture with six neurons in two hidden layers each is, uh, works relatively fine. So this is illustrated here on the right hand side. You can see the mean squared error. For this example here, the number of neurons per layer. And we've selected six because it gives us relatively low mean squared errors. Uh, whereas the complexity of the problem is still uh, good for optimization. So we find that supercritical fluid properties can be learned to a high accuracy using relatively small neural networks. Okay, um, so before we go to our supercritical case study, let's first discuss how the neural networks affect the optimization. So what we did here is we consider the case where um, we have ethanol as a working fluid, so it's a subcritical RC. We learn the thermodynamic using uh, the Helmholtz equation of state. And we find that this works really very accurately as well. And then we compare the optimization performance from the hybrid model to a purely mechanistic model. And that's illustrated here on the right hand side. This is the convergence plot. So it's objective over uh, CPU time. And what you see is if you use the Helmholtz equation of state in the optimization, so you manually implement it, you get a rather low convergence to the optimal solution. Whereas if you use the neural networks, you converge much quicker to the optimal solution. And there are two reasons for it. First of all, the neural networks lead to much, much smaller optimization problems. So here just five variables and equality constraints plus the two degrees of freedom. Whereas the Helmholtz equation of state requires extra variables and extra equality constraints leading to 17 additional variables and constraints. And also what we found is that the neural networks lead to much tighter relaxations compared to um, the mechanistic model. So we get a faster convergence of the hybrid model compared to the mechanistic one. So when you can learn the thermodynamic from your uh, database, you can also automate this process and you can automate for uh, several fluids. And that's what we did. So we did the rough or first pre-screening of our fluids. We find that 21 of them are suitable for transcritical operation. Then we generate the input data automatically. We uh, get the fluid properties from Coolplop automatically. We train the neural networks automatically. We put them in the hybrid process model, also automated. Then we perform the global optimization in the reduced space and we repeat this process for all working fluid candidates. And therefore we can automate the full process of uh, working fluid selection for organic Rankine cycles. When we look at the results for uh, the power output, we find that these three fluids here are optimal or the best ones with rather high power outputs and unfortunately also relatively high cost of electricity. <clears throat> at the same time, if we go for the economic uh, objective, we get smaller power outputs and we also uh, get less heat or less power generated. And we can also see that in the results here. 
So on the left hand side we can see that we get almost constant temperature difference along the length of the evaporator here, which is not the case if we do the uh, some more economic uh, optimization because you need to invest more money into the equipment. Also what we can see is that um, the high pressure levels are at the lower bound for some economic optimization. Um, so it's not really worth uh, going to the transcritical pressures if you look at the um, economics of this process. Also we find that refrigerants are promising for geothermal RCs. Okay, this was only one work that we've presented, but uh, it's part of a series of different works. In our previous work we looked at single fluid, working fluids uh, for organic Rankine cycles. So we learned one single um, working fluid. We looked at how it performed in the optimization and we compared it to mechanistic models of the thermodynamic. We also performed uh, fluid selection for the ORC. We did the same for transcritical ORC, which was presented today. And what is coming soon is binary working fluid mixtures and superstructure design. So let me summarize um, what we found on the method is that the data, uh, integration of data-driven machine learning models into large-scale process optimization is feasible and the reduced space and tailored relaxations are enabler technologies for this. Also, all models are open source available within Mellon. From the application point of view, we found that the neural networks can learn some link properties very accurately and that mechanistic data-driven modeling allows to identify the best fluid and the best process design for transcritical RCs. And we hope that we can use these rapid developments in machine learning for chemical engineering in the future as well. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and time and I hope to see you at the conference soon. Thank you.